I want to go back to the year. Are you ready for this? Here's my take on the memo. I want to go back to the year 600 B.C. Okay. Okay. All right. Follow me here. 600 B.C. I want to go back to Aesop's fables. Remember, one of the most famous Aesop fables was about the elephant who went into, you know, went through long, long, long months of pregnancy and gave birth to a mouse. Uh, Here's how it went with Aesop. Loud groans and noises were heard, and crowds of people came from all parts to see what was the matter. While they were assembled in anxious expectation of some terrible calamity, out came a mouse. And that's exactly what I thought of when I saw this memo. Yeah, they, they, the elephant gave birth to a mouse. It was all this buildup, all this buzz, all this expectation, all this talk by Donald Trump that this was going to vindicate him and prove there was no collusion and this was going to destroy Robert Mueller. It was a big bust, a total bust. Not even Republicans could defend it because the memo does not nothing, doesn't prove anything, certainly doesn't prove everything that the Republicans said it was going to prove. And, of course, by releasing it, they violated and, and just ignored the warnings of the Department of Justice acting the attorney general because Jeff Sessions has recused himself and the FBI, the director of the FBI, who said if he put out this memo, it could very well jeopardize the work of the Justice Department, the FBI, and the FISA court, and all of our intelligence agencies. But Donald Trump released it anyway, and he did so with the full support of the Republicans. And the big, look, the big message of this memo is, and the big story will be forever, how far Republicans in Congress were willing to go to cover up for Donald Trump. They were willing to go so far as to destroy the credibility, the integrity of the FBI and the Justice Department. They have launched war on a war against our chief law enforcement officers and the entire FBI. It's not just Christopher Wray. You attack Christopher Wray and the work that they're doing, that work's being done by people right down the line. It's an attack on the entire FBI nationwide, an attack on the entire Justice Department nationwide. And Republicans who used to call themselves the party of law and order and would always support anything that law enforcement or the FBI or Justice Department, all their prosecutors wanted to do, they have turned against them now. Why? To back up this idiot in the White House. That's That tells you all you need to know about Paul Ryan's character or Mitch McConnell's character or any of the rest of them. Yeah. They're skunks. You know, totally. it, I, I saw somebody make a comment uh, on Friday that says that in the – like when we look at the news, how we're digesting it these days, right, which is rapidly, there's so many things coming out so quickly. It's really hard to f- sort of process what's what. And so we'll move on from this memo pretty quickly. I would imagine there will be some new outrage, and we'll just sort of skip past yeah. it. And we will, we'll talk about it, and then it will, we'll move on. However – in the grand scheme of things, when you look at this whole narrative about the Republicans and what they're doing to uphold Donald Trump, who is clearly not fit for office, this is a major, that, major that, turning point. That will last. You know, it is like a skunk. And, you know, when a skunk gets uh, killed on a roadkill, you smell it forever. <laughs> the stink lingers. And that's a stink of these Republicans caving in, bending over for Donald Trump and going against the law enforcement officers, great law enforcement officers of this country. This will be the legacy yeah. of, 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 of this moment for these Republicans. They'll be able to, generations <laughs> from now, they'll be able to point to this exact moment when yeah. this memo was released as to how far the Republicans were willing to go to protect their president out of tribalism. And, you know, I, I over the weekend, I listened to the entire series of this podcast called Slow Burn, which is about the Watergate scandal, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. It's done by Slate. It's wonderful. And they sort of make the same point without hitting directly on the news of the day. It's just like there was so much stuff happening with Watergate that they, like yeah. people who yeah. lived it and covered it, even now they look back and they're like, oh, yeah, we kind of forgot about that whole thing. Because there were 
scandals and, and mini scandals and bigger right. scandals, and you just sort of you didn't really know how to compartmentalize all of it because it came yeah. so fast. But the end of that story is, in the end, finally, right. there were there was a group of, of very courageous Senate Republicans who went down to the White House and said, "Mr. President, you got to go." All right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> will there be out of this gang even one who's willing to do that? I don't know who it is. I doubt it. I mean, maybe John McCain, but only maybe, you know. Uh, not Certainly not Bob Corker, not Jeff Flake even, uh, those who have been critical. But, you know, they vote for Donald Trump. They haven't said anything. Yeah. No, no. So, uh, so let's take a look at this memo. First of all, I think what's, what's significant about this memo, the very first thing that struck me is the very first line of the memo. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make a few points about what what they say this memo uh, uh, was going to prove and what it doesn't. But what's striking to me was the very first line: "This memorandum provides members an update on significant facts relating to the committee's ongoing investigation into the Department of Justice and Federal Bureau of Investigation." That's not what the investigation is all about. They're not supposed to be investigating, and they weren't investigating, and they're not. The FBI, or they weren't until now, and the Department of Justice. Remember, this is the House Intelligence Committee. They're investigating possible collusion. They're investigating Russian meddling in the election and possible collusion of Trump officials with the Russians in so doing. This is not an investigation of the FBI and the Justice Department. But they let the cat out of the bag in that very first sentence. That's what Donald Trump is all he wants, and that's what Devin Nunez wants, and that's what Paul Ryan wants, and that's what they got with this memo. All right, so uh, the memo. Uh, they, the Republicans say that um, this proves that the Christopher Steele dossier, remember, he was hired by Fusion GPS, Fusion GPS, opposition research firm, let's remember, that started, was first hired by Republicans, Washington Beacon and Republican sponsors to try to stop Donald Trump in the primary. They didn't succeed, so Fusion GPS then continued its work, now paid for by the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign. So Republicans say uh, that uh, Christopher Steele, that dossier, is the only thing that the FBI took to the FISA court to get permission to surveil Carter Page. And again, that's what the whole thing was about, that they got a warrant from the FISA court to conduct surveillance on Trump aide Carter Page. Was the, was the dossier the only thing they used? No. And the memo even says that. So that was wrong. But totally wrong. Didn't prove that at all. They had several sources, of which one was the, the Steele dossier. Two, they say that uh, the FBI never told the FISA court that um, there might have been some political money behind the preparation of this dossier. Uh, does the memo say that? No. In fact, uh, the FBI has told us, they di has said, they released a statement, they did tell the FISA court uh, that there were several sources. One of them included this dossier, which was prepared by a political campaign, may, may not have mentioned Hillary, but a political campaign, po po politicians, Republicans and Democrats, who were against Donald Trump. So it doesn't prove that either. It doesn't prove anything that they said. Um, was this, they said, this is, this is what got the FBI interested in Carter Page, this dossier. Uh, no, it didn't. Uh, we know, in fact, that Carter Page, this isn't the first time that there was intelligence surveillance under Carter Page it started back in 2013 because Carter Page was even then meeting with Kremlin officials, came to the attention of the FBI. This is before Donald Trump even announced for president. And he was under surveillance back then as a possible Russian spy. So they knew this guy was up to no good. He'd been on their radar for a long time. It didn't start with a dossier, as they claim. It didn't start with a Clinton campaign. It didn't start with Christopher Steele. They were on his, again, on his case, he brought, came to their attention a long time. So then the next argument they say is that this phony warrant obtained by the, F, by the FBI from the FISA 
to go after Carter Page is what triggered the Mueller investigation. True? No, not at all. The memo itself, you know, what's really great is, I don't know about if you still see a newspaper anymore or what newspaper you might have checked, but both the Washington Post and the New York Times printed the entire memo and annotated the whole thing, which I thought was brilliant. And you can read, so you can read, it's only three and a half pages. You can read the whole thing and everything that's wrong with it. In both of those papers and they're online and maybe your own paper did the same thing, wherever you happen to be. Anyhow, the memo itself states that what triggered the Mueller investigation was George Papadopoulos way less in the spring of 2016 when they found him having all these meetings of the Russians and he fessed up and pleaded guilty and has been cooperating with Robert Mueller ever since. And it says, there's a line in here that says, that's what triggered the FBI investigation, which became, of course, the special counsel's investigation when Donald Trump fired a James Comey. So again, it doesn't prove it doesn't prove that at all. And finally, you know, they still claim that this was um, the FBI. The reason they did this is because they were all for Hillary Clinton. Yeah, right. <laughs> tell that to Hillary Clinton. Tell that to the Clinton campaign, and tell that to James Comey, who smeared Hillary Clinton in the summer, July, when he cleared her of any illegal activity. But called her careless and reckless and all the rest of the stuff for having this private email server. And then tell that to James Comey when on October 28th, just before the election, he reopened the Clinton investigation uh, and because of the Anthony Weiner emails. And as we said before, um, you can make the case that uh, Donald Trump would not be president today if it were not for James Comey. In fact, at the time, Donald Trump was praising James Comey because of all the help he got from James Comey. So, again, this memo proves nothing. It is all about um, trying to undermine the credibility of Robert Mueller, and that's been Donald Trump's effort from the beginning. And he bragged over the weekend, this totally vindicates me. Uh, Adam Schiff, our ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, put it in perspective. First of all, as uh, Adam says, this is, has nothing to do with oversight of the FBI. This is a pure political hit job. They voted against hearing from the FBI. When you do oversight, you haul them in under oath. You say, why was this included? Why was that included? The interest wasn't oversight. The interest was a political hit job on the FBI in the service of the president. Exactly. Political hit job on the part of the FBI. Does it, and, and uh, as uh, Adam Schiff says, did politics play a part? Oh, yeah. That politics plays a part in this memo. This memo is purely political. This has been the most transparent use of classified information I've ever seen for a purely partisan purpose. Purely partisan purpose. And what about Donald Trump saying this, which he tweeted over the weekend, this totally vindicates me. Now you can see there was no collusion, no obstruction, yet the witch hunt continues. Does it totally vindicate Donald Trump? Quite to the contrary, even this very flawed memo uh, demonstrates what the origin of the investigation was, and that origin involved the issue of collusion. I want to read really quickly uh, what Donald Trump tweeted over the weekend. Yeah. Because uh, this is, I think, what Donald Trump's purpose was all along, right, with this memo. This memo totally vindicates, per, uh, yeah, there uh, you qu go. quotation marks, Trump in probe. But the Russian witch hunt goes on and mm -hmm. on. There, T H E I R, there was no collusion <laughs> and there was no obstruction. The word now used because after one year of looking endlessly and finding nothing, collusion is dead. This is an American disgrace. So, first of all, it's riddled with errors. Yeah, and plus everything he says is wrong, and it's just wrong. They but it shows that's what the that's what the whole point was all along. All he wanted was to be able to write that tweet saying, right. I am Absolutely. totally vindicated. Right. And the Trump base is going to say, oh, well, that's over. Mm -hmm. Trump is totally vindicated. Right, right. And there's no collusion. No, we don't know that yet. And by the way, the fact that we're talking more about obstruction right now than collusion is because that's where Robert Mueller is right now, Take obviously. Your pick. Collusion, yeah. obstruction, <laughs> one of those is going to get him. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh, I think you'd uh, be pleased to know, of course, that... Uh, uh, Donnie Jr. weighed in over the weekend. He called the a memo sweet revenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a guy, mark my word, this will be the next one indicted.
in this investigation. Then let's see what he says about it. Because and again, they're saying the quiet part loud. Yeah. Just go with it. You don't have to this exactly This is the idiot who do, called that meeting at Trump Tower to get on dirt on Hillary. And then his father, of course, lied about it and said, no, it was a meeting to talk about adoption procedures. And this is the idiot who then released all the emails that proved that it was really about getting dirt on Hillary. This is the idiot that called the meeting that Steve Bannon said was treasonous, and they should have called the FBI instead of having this meeting. Yeah, Donald Jr., sweet revenge. Uh, there were some Republican voices over the weekend who, uh, refreshingly, disagreed with the president. Absolutely uh, stunned me. Trey Gowdy, who helped write the memo, said this memo should have no impact on the Russian. Inv I think Trey Gowdy is a. Uh, he realized uh, that they're, they're, they're out there on thin ice. Anyhow, he backed down a little bit and said this memo should have nothing to do with uh, uh, the investigation. It should continue. And he said he helped write it, so he knows it well. John McCain from out in uh, Arizona uh, spoke up um, disgraceful for the Republicans. Yeah, he put out a tweet uh, uh, over the weekend that said the latest attacks on the FBI and Department of Justice serve no American interest. <laughs> No parties, no presidents, only Putins. <laughs> yeah, right. This is good for Vladimir Putin.